us also there at rickandbubba.com. Uh, welcome back to the program, friend. Larry Taunton is back. Yeah. Larry. Come at it, Larry. <laughs> Great to be with you, Rick. Yeah, well, you know, Fixed Point Foundation, you've been out there fighting the good fight, and you know, I've been trying to fire you up before we went on the air, be sure you don't get in here and, you know, kind of <laughs> – I know how you skirt around issues sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, I'm known for kind of holding back what I really think. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That, we'll get, of course, You'll you know, do that. You'll probably end up, you know, today getting us all killed. But, um, <laughs> As we're know, live from Memphis today. Yeah, yeah live from Me- our Memphis studio today. But, you know, one of the things that we do need to talk about, and, of course, we just ended one, and, and I heard you speak even to our own church about this um, mm-hmm. uh, feminizing of the church and feminizing of Jesus. Uh, I know that's not one of our main topics today, but it, it was just talked about, and, uh, I heard you actually address that from the pulpit, and of course you could have heard a pin drop. But, uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, so that's something that I know is one of your passions as well, because the American church is in for a fight. Yeah, um, for sure. I, it, it seems to me, Rick, that everything's become all about tone. You know, it really doesn't matter um, whether you're right or whether you're speaking truth. It's all that matters in, is sincerity and tone. And uh, we're increasingly facing an enemy, an enemy abroad that – is it really concerned with tone, and uh, and it's it's going to require us to uh, really uh, become a, a little more serious about who we are, and we're going to have to our manhood as such is really going to be tested. Well, you know, one of the things you hit on, and we're because we're, we're going to talk a little bit about because this is the this is what's going on right now, yeah, and that is that uh, Christianity is being persecuted all over the world and, and to a much smaller degree, but still to a degree in America, and that's only going to increase. You're going out to Europe and you're going out and looking at other parts of the world and say, hey, by the way, it's coming to you, America. You need to be ready. And one of the things you said that really, I mean, it really stuck with me was why so many males are being drawn to Islam who are confused and have not already established their faith and, the, and Islam is appealing to them while Christianity, the American European version of it, isn't. And, and, and talk about that for a minute, because that, 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 you're, you're the only one I've heard say that. Yeah, I think, um, you know, listen, if you're outside of the Christian faith and if you don't know uh, manly Christians like Rick Burgess and myself, then, you know, the church probably looks pretty sissified um, hmm. to you. And uh, they, the reality is that for many young um, males, uh, Islam looks, which is hyper masculine. I mean, their treatment of women is uh, is extraordinary. But I mean, when we're talking about ISIS and mm-hmm. uh, you know Boko Haram and this sort of thing, uh, it looks very masculine. It looks tough. It looks like they're they're fighting for something that matters. They're pretty clear about who they are and what they believe. And um, you know, there are more. I mean, get this: there are more British-born Muslims fighting for ISIS than are fighting for the British Army. Now, you, now, that's a big statement. I mean, that's incredible. And uh, that's we a haven't, big statement. We haven't seen as that's, many that's flowing British, out of this That's country. British, not, that's not Middle Eastern. That's British. That's right. British-born Muslims raised in, in Britain. I mean, um, the, uh, the famous, uh, the infamous uh, figure Jihad John is, speaks with a British accent. I mean, he was born and raised in, uh, in, in Britain. And, uh, and these are guys who are flowing um, to the Middle East. And we're seeing some of that out of this country, and I, I think that that will only increase. All right, so we've been watching our president, and, and you know, when we are at war with terrorists, that there really is no way to ignore overwhelmingly, with very little exception, our terrorist attacks that we've had against Americans and Europeans and, 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 and Israel all go back to the same religion. Mm-hmm. Well, now the president is quick to say, whoa, 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 now. First president to do this. Christianity has not, we, we, we can't get up on our high horse. But, I mean, look at, look at the history of Christianity. Now, we've had some radicals, the Crusades, the Spanish Inquisition. He loves to talk about those two things. And, and I told everybody before you got here that you're tired of this. Oh, I'm, I'm really sick of it. I mean, this came up on Al Jazeera in this recent debate that I did there, but it, it comes up everywhere in my uh, debate with uh, Michael Shermer, another well-known atheist, um, with the imam, um, the, uh, not my mom, but an imam, uh, Muslim cleric, <laughs> right. uh, and, uh, and, and others. This comes up, and, uh, and, and it shows how bankrupt the argument is that you have to go back 
you know, 500 to 1,000 years to say, well, here we go. You know, Christians did these terrible things. I think it's rather easily dismissed and, uh, and dealt with. Um, if I, as, as I pointed out to um, one of the fellows I was debating on, uh, Al Jazeera, if I, I reach across here and I, I hit Speedy and I say, in Jesus' name, that doesn't make it a Christian act. Right. Christianity, Jesus did not say you are to evangelize uh, at the point of a sword. Um, th- in other words, the, the Spanish Inquisition, um, the, uh, the Crusades, and by the way, I want to say this about the Crusades, there's also a matter of chronology. Muslims invaded Europe in, a se- in 711 A.D. Um, the first crusade um, began in 1095, so we're almost a almost a 400 year gap. So that is worth pointing out. There is right. a there is a matter of chronology. Muslims invaded Europe, but anyway, that aside, uh, a killing people in Jesus's name is clearly contrary to Jesus's teaching. Whereas violence done in the name of Allah is quite consistent with the Quran. Now, when you say this, and Memphis I, is pretty today. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> but when you said this, you actually have the audacity to actually quote from the Quran and actually support your argument. Yeah. But because I keep hearing, well, now that's, and then some of these people, well, different versions of the Quran and this and that and whatever. But, but so the, the, the you know, the question that nobody wants to take on, no one, is which group are the devout Muslims? the ones who are right now waging war on all who will not convert are the ones who say, well, no, that's not really our cause. Yeah. W- which ones would you, like, for instance, let me use a Christian example. Who's the Christian here? I believe that Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. Well, I'm a Christian too, and I believe there's many ways to heaven. Which one of us would be biblically sane? Well, I think the first would be. Right, that's the question. Yeah, um, a religion must be defined by its revelation, right? right. I mean, uh, in our case, it's it's the Bible and it's the man, Jesus Christ. In the case of Islam, it is uh, the Quran and the man is Muhammad. That's that's how you define um, a religion. Otherwise, it's just your opinion. I mean, just as you're pointing out in your example, for someone to say there are many ways um, to have it, and I'm a Christian. Well, that runs counter to John fourteen six, which says I, where Jesus said, "I am the way, the truth, and." Be life. I mean, and no one comes to the Father unless you no go through one, me. No one. So, so if you want to be a Christian and be a follower of Jesus, you'd have to ignore that statement. Yeah. Well, yes. I mean, you're 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 if, you're, if you're, you want to go many ways. If you want to go many ways. Right. I mean, uh, if you are if you're to be consistent with Jesus's teaching, you have to go with the the revelation um, that we have in in the form of Scripture. And back Same to your thing, other point, if I come up and say, if you don't convert to Christianity right now, I'm gonna kill you. That would be counter to what Jesus said. That is, you know, he who lives by the sword dies by the sword. I mean, uh, Jesus clearly taught this is not the way his message was to be proclaimed. This was not the way we're to evangelize. Um, Our God is a respecter of choice. Uh, In the case of Islam, uh, the the, the, the Quranic teaching makes clear you've got three choices. Um, You can convert, you can pay a tax, or you can die. And this is what ISIS is doing. Um, they're quoting chapter and verse in what they're doing. The, bo- the burning of the, the Jordanian pilot, they're citing um, their own scriptures um, for that act. The beheading of the Christians, which is taking place um, en masse um, throughout the Middle East, uh, they're supporting that with Quranic teaching. In other words, it comes straight out of their, their holy book, whereas the the so-called moderates, and I'm, I, I love them, I'm grateful for them, but uh, they're, they're very inconsistent with Islamic teaching. We'll come back. Larry Taunton is our guest. I know some of you may have questions for him, and you certainly can fire those in at 866-WE-BE-BIG. He was asked to come on Al Jazeera's uh, television, kind of an odd experience. We'll, we'll talk about that coming back. Uh, if you want to find out more about Fixed Point Foundation, we'll put all that in show notes today, too, at rickandbubba.com as they continue to go out and defend the faith and train others to defend the faith all over the world. We'll be right back. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. We're back. I got you <laughs> we be big as a number. A uh, friend of the program and uh, brother in Christ, uh, Larry Taunton. By the way, some emailer just told me, and I'm, I didn't, you're right, I didn't pick up my fupa. I said last hour, I said, Jesus, what I meant to say was 100% man and 100% 
God, and I said he was 100% man and 100% woman. <laughs> Sorry really about that. I didn't, I didn't catch that. Thing. I didn't even pick it up either. Thank you for knowing what I meant. It's the way you have to listen to this show. I know what they mean. <laughs> uh, so, anyway. We're <laughs> that's a mistake. Yeah, but that's not what they said. Yeah, but you have to know how to know what they mean. They don't communicate real well. <laughs> All right, uh, we're back. 866 uh, We Be Big is our number. Larry Talton with us, Fixed Point Foundation. Uh, t- t- briefly, people could be hearing Fixed Point for the first time. It, it, I, I had you know, kind of a real simplified version of what you do, but tell everybody what Fixed Point's all about. C.S. Lewis said that Christianity is a fighting religion, and uh, at Fixed Point, we fight. I mean, we're, uh, we're, we, we seek to defend the gospel of Jesus Christ in the, the marketplace of ideas. And um, so we're, uh, we're in, uh, missionaries, in some sense, to the industrialized world. So I'll write for USA Today, The Atlantic, appear on CNN, this debate we were just talking about on Al Jazeera. Um, we, uh, we, had, we, we seek to push back at a culture that's increasingly hostile to Christianity. That's what we do. Uh, and one of those was your invitation to go on Al Jazeera's. I remember when I got that email, mm. I thought <laughs> I thought to myself, you know. He's lost his mind. Well, no, my first thought was all the memories uh, that Larry and I had, uh, <laughs> you know, and I started thinking, what will my role be at fixed point? You How know? will I do uh, <laughs> uh, passing the torch? <laughs> right. <as> a- <laughs> right. Well, because we know that, that, that – what they're trying to do now, it's, and, and it happened in the interview with, with you, is you immediately realized that everybody in the room was hostile toward your belief system, and over here's the Muslim, and, and they're not asking him any hard questions. Yeah. Because, you know, like they want to ask you about how marriage is defined, and he. You want to hear how they define? Yeah, I mean, yeah. You want to hear their response to any other version? Yeah, never, never asked him that. Yeah, they, never, and so what was what was that that situation like? Well, it's really kind of interesting. Al Jazeera itself. I mean, we had to think about this fairly carefully. Al Jazeera has three main networks: um, Al Jazeera Arabic, Al Jazeera English, and then they launched Al Jazeera America. Um, two years ago to try to win the hearts and minds of, of Americans. It's owned by the Qatari uh, royal family, um, who is also known to support Hamas and the Muslim Brotherhood. So sure. um, kind, of, kind of interesting. So it's, Al Jazeera, it's, if you really, you don't have to look hard to see there's an agenda here. Yeah, well, they're, they're local, um, you know, um, Al Jazeera America is kind of like CNN. In, uh, in its look and difference. feel, there's in terms of its look, look or feel, their domestic audience is only fifteen thousand. So we're hitting way more than that right now. But their yeah. global audience is two hundred and fifty million, which mm. is wow. rather extraordinary. So we saw it as an opportunity to, I mean, if I get an invitation to go speak to a church or to go a, to to speak to the Muslim world, I'm I'm going to choose the latter. That's just what we do. That's our mission. So here I was debating Dan Dennett, who is one of the um, very well-known atheists, one of the, the top atheists, if you will. I was kind of excited about that. Um, he's a guy who wrote a book called Breaking the Spell, in which he basically says, you know, that, uh, that, that religion is, is a, an illusion, a man-made um, kind of thing. And then I was debating this, also a part of this, which is kind of strange, um, a Muslim cleric, um, uh, uh, Zaid Shakir, one of the most influential Muslims in the world, apparently. And I thought, yeah, this is something I think I want to do. And so the the topic that we were debating was whether or not religion does good or bad. And, of course, I sought to define that by saying, well, it depends on the religion we're talking about. I mean, I would agree with Dennett, the atheist, that some religions are harmful. Some are anti-intellectual. Some are dangerous. Um, but not Christianity. Christianity isn't one of them. And of course, they they immediately you know go to things like the Crusades, you know, or, Back or violence the in the Old Testament again. or whatever. And I thought, okay, Old fine. Testament violence. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'm, I'm I'm more than happy to wade into this territory and discuss all of this. And uh, so that's that's basically what we did. But but again, I want to go back to what I the, what what I, and it took place in in this interview. What what is this thing like when we take on the definition of marriage and the movement of the alternative lifestyle community why are they so silent about islam but because yes christians say we believe marriage is defined this way and we're going to stand up for that and there's even rallies going on this weekend about the in case the ruling's about to come down from the supreme court but but there is no call back to your original statement about we can't let this crusade inquisition thing continue to be used you, we would be in conflict of Christ to say, well, if you tried to define marriage another way, we're going to kill you. Yeah. You know, we just say we disagree with that. We think that's immoral. We do not believe God was clear 
He was he put his his own record. If you believe that's the word of God, then he he really never he 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 defined this right out of the gate, and he never changed his mind. Jesus confirms it again in the New Testament, refers back to he made them male, male and female. So that's really not there's no real argument there from the Christian faith. But we're not coming to get you and take your life. Yeah. Well, Islam says you remember when um, and I never can pronounce his name. The guy that's no longer in charge in Iran, but he was there. Ahmadine, uh, yeah, yeah. whatever his name I was. I mean, job. Yeah. You remember when he made the thing, we don't have homosexuality here. And everybody laughed. <laughs> no, what he meant is we don't tolerate it. If, if someone finds out, if we think that, we'll kill you. ISIS just beheaded a number of homosexuals. Yeah, threw some off buildings, right. yeah. beheaded. But you never hear, never hear anyone of that movement say, and you know what? It's, it is it is absolutely dark and twisted. Islam's view of homosexuality is wrong. You never hear that. I think the reason is is this. I can only speculate, but I I, I, I think of the 1930s. Mm-hmm. Um, people forget this. Winston Churchill was ap- actually an anomaly when he was the guy who said, you know, war is coming. No one was listening to him in the, uh, the early 30s and the mid-30s. By the late 30s, they were starting to listen. But when he was saying that Hitler and fascism were a, uh, a tremendous threat, Joseph Stalin, this sort of thing, the left, led by... You know, the, the, the poster boy of the left at the time is Neville Chamberlain. Oh, boy. All said, you know, that Churchill's just off his rocker. Um, by the time Hitler invaded Poland, no, that, that position was untenable. You know, no one could say that really anymore. I think we're, we're reliving those days all over again. And the reason, it, I think, is because it, it's sort of an old Arab uh, Arabic proverb, the enemy of my enemy is my friend, meaning that, um, that the left, the cultural left in this country, and uh, Islam have a common enemy, and that's Christianity. And uh, Christianity, at least Bible-believing, evangelical Christianity, remains a serious threat to their domestic social agenda. Islam is, is as yet anyway, perceived as a, it's something that's over there, okay. something we really don't have to worry about. That, at least, is my theory. So you're saying until the first homosexual is beheaded, like in downtown New York, uh, they say, well, the Christians we see, we don't really see them doing much over here. So, so that's not a concern of ours. Always much more concerned with the domestic policy than with the foreign policy. Mm-hmm. Right. They're, they're, they consider conservatives, and especially evangelical Christians, a bigger enemy than Islam. Uh, the New York Times recently stated just that, that uh, Christians are the chief obstacle to the fulfillment of the left social agenda. And that, and, and that kind of answers your question. There you go. We'll be back uh, more with Larry wow. Taunton next. If you have questions, 866-WE-BE-BIG. We'll let you talk to Larry. Uh, more right after this. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba. I uh, got a question for Larry, and then we'll get into some other things. Jasper, Alabama. Dave, you're on with Larry Taunton. Go ahead. Hey, thanks for taking my call. It's my pleasure, Bob. Um, yeah, I, I fully agree with what has been said, and that violence is not a part at all of Christianity. But the argument is out there that in the Old Testament, God didn't just say violence, but he said, kill everything that's before you as you take the land. And that was the instruction to the Israelites. And how, what is our uh, argument, understanding, how do we come back when that's what is being thrown back at us, that, you know, Christianity yeah. offers? Violence is there in, in your guy. Well, Larry does take this on, and you can listen right now, and I'll let him speak to this. He, he actually, I, I saw him give a message at a church. Uh, Larry does not run from, nor should we as Christians run from, the violence of the Old Testament uh, because uh, it's there, uh, and, and, but, but there, there, you have to understand what it's all about, too. So, Larry, I'll, I'll let you have that. Uh, there's a couple of things uh, to be understood about violence in the Old Testament. Um, first of all, um, we have to understand that it was uh, for a uh, specific period of time and for a specific purpose. Another thing is that violence in the Bible, you, you have to understand that there's, there's two major categories, that which is commanded by God, which we see, say, in uh, you know, Exodus chapter 12 with the, um, the, uh, the Passover, for instance, um, or um, the kind of violence that you see that is simply being reported. So, uh, as in the case of Judges 19 and the, uh, the dismemberment of the concubine. If I were to push over to, um, to Helmsy there, a, uh, uh, let's say he knew nothing about World War II, and I just pushed over to him. Which is likely. Yeah, okay, which, <laughs> all right. And I, I push over to him a, a text 
uh, a history of World War II, and he opens it up to, uh, let's say, the Bataan Death March um, or the dropping of the atomic bombs. And he's just horrified, understandably, by what he's reading. Um, it would be silly if he concluded, well, this author clearly condones these terrible things. I'd say, whoa, 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 hold on just a second. Um, it it is, uh, is simply being reported. Furthermore, in the case of violence that we see in Scripture, you must understand that, that God always offered opportunity to repent. How many times did they go around Jericho? A lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, that is to say it was sort of God's equivalent of dropping leaflets and saying, you know, there is an opportunity here. Something also that all, kind of amuses me about the... Uh, uh, the, the argument about violence in Scripture is it sort of presupposes that man is somehow, we're, we're gentler, we're, we, would, we would do better. And I love what David, King David said when, um, when God was um, preparing to judge him. Um, God effectively gives him the choice. I can turn you over to your enemies <clears throat> or I can punish you. And he says, whatever you do, do not turn me over to man for he knows no mercy. Your anger has an end. In other words, this is a picture of a God who is just, but who is also merciful and, uh, and who chooses to relent. I mean, let's take a look at, I mean, just something like uh, Jonah. Jonah's kind of typical of all of us. He, he doesn't want to go to Nineveh. He wants those people to suffer. And God says judgment may befall them, but before it happens, they're going to hear the truth and they're going to have an opportunity to repent. Uh, this, shouldn't, this shouldn't be something that completely horrifies us. Um, in our own day, right now, um, and unless we're just uh, painfully naive, our freedom right now, all these people here, is preserved by people who are fighting and dying all over the world. This is, this is what it takes, and it's no different from what we see in Scripture. Yeah, and, and there is a, a, God's wrath being handed down on a, on a people uh, has been done through his chosen people. It's been done to his people that he chose who've turned against him by their enemies. You know, I, I got in this argument with a, with, a, with a buddy of mine about whether God allows these things uh, or is this just all things that have happened because of the fall of, of man. And I said, well, if you don't think that God allows them, then you don't think he could stop them. And, uh, and I said, so he says to his people, Make no mistake, I'm bringing the Babylonians. I'm bringing them. Mm -hmm. Now, he went on to make the Babylonians pay the price for their rejection of him, but he used them to even discipline his own people. He sure did. And, and so mm -hmm. uh, they're, 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 when you talk about war, and you talk about, like just like right now, a lot of people are saying, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I can't believe we have this president. But then you read in the Bible that says that president was put there by God. B but why? That's the question. Why is this happening? What, what, what is his purpose of this? Sometimes it's to bless and sometimes it's to punish. But ultimately, the point you're making, which can't be missed, every single bit of it is merciful because all of this is giving you an opportunity to repent. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and if you don't, he's already been on record that sin leads to death. It always does. Well, and, and, and when people say, well, what about innocent people? What innocent people? There aren't any innocent people. I mean, if you if you look at the holiness of God, there's not one innocent person here. I put out on Twitter yesterday, and of course, it made some people angry. I'm never really not taking, you. I'm not I'm not taken back by the suffering in this world when I see what we've done. I'm really more taken back that God hadn't killed every one of us. I mean, that's well, that is the biblical message, and of course, that this is a really important point that you're making, Rick, because Scripture tells us that that God made the world good. It was sin free. And uh, we're the ones who screwed it up. We're the ones who took it off the rails and that there is suffering, that there is death, that there is violence is because of us. It's not because of God. And that's the great promise of revelation that every tear will be wiped away. Death will be no more. This is, this is how he'll, he'll reverse um, the corruption that we have brought into the world. But, you know, I think of a passage um, immediately comes to mind, Luke 13, where the, uh, the Tower of Siloam falls and it kills a number of people. And uh, the people say to Jesus, you know, were they really bad sinners? I guess they were. And Jesus says, repent, lest the same thing happen to you. And other, in other right. words, to your point, right. that we all have the taint, uh, the stain of sin, and it's only God's mercy that prevents him from taking our life at any moment. Yeah, we have to ignore a lot of his mercy to take issue with, with him on the things that, that are allowed to happen. Mm -hmm. And we always ignore that part of it. That's human nature. We, we I mean— the fact that he hasn't just wiped this place clean 
of every single one of us and just said, you know what, I tried that a couple times. I, you know, when, when, I, when, I, when I destroyed them the first time, I even went on record as saying I regretted making them. Yes. You ever and seen yet, that line? That's a big line uh, when he's getting ready to, to bring the flood, and it said that he was so disturbed by how evil man had become, he regretted Isn't that amazing? making man. But think he of regretted this. it. Think of this, Rick. How long did Noah preach, do you recall? 120 years. Before the flood. Before the flood. And I how mean, many people said, I'm in? <laughs> they didn't. I talk about Jeremiah. You know, when you talk about all the violence that happened with Jeremiah, because you run a ministry, so you can relate to this. What do you What do you have to do periodically to those of us that support what you do? I got to give you a report on what your money and investment in the kingdom has produced. Mm-hmm. We did this, we did this, and this took place, and that did place. You know, I do that. I, do, I see ministries do that all the time. I've been on boards, and I've been with people who brought me in for the presentation to talk about some stuff. Jeremiah. Hey guys, I've been at this. I appreciate your support. All right, how many how many people have submitted to the authority of our holy God? Uh, that'd be zero. I got none. <laughs> Isaiah too. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. yeah. Nobody has 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 nobody has <laughs> repented. They and, and, and See, you mean it's not about numbers, Rick? <laughs> right. I got I got zero. I got nothing. But 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 what I love is when Jeremiah says, "I'm done with it. I, I'm tired of talking about you. Every time I bring you up, they try to kill me. They hate me. See if it sounds familiar. They spit on me." They, they, they just, they just totally, they hate me, and I'm tired of it. But you are so ingrained in me, and you are so wonderful. I can't help but talk about you. I can't shut up about you, even when I don't want to, because I know that it's going to bring the world against me. But, but I can't stop it. You're so, you're burning in my bones. Mm-hmm. And see, where are those people? I, I, I mean, they're few. But, but I mean, that, that's where we're supposed to be. But but all we do is sit around and we're constantly kind of touchy feely. Somebody might get mad or I might upset this and whatever and whatever. And 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 you know we are to be wise and we are to be gentle. But that doesn't mean you compromise the truth. No, it's become. Um, it, it, what I see is, it tends to be one thing or the other. Either it's all about the relationship, and hence you compromise everything. Right. For the sake of preserving the relationship, or it's uh, it's all about defense of the faith, and it it sometimes is uh, you know comes off as you know so bombastic and you know uh, offensive, and and we're to, it's a really a fine line you're trying to walk to maintain the truth and uh, and to proclaim it and yet not compromise what it is that we believe and who we are. So. Uh, that's what we're always going for. That's what we do at Fixed Point. And, um, you know, it's amazing to see how God works in that. I mean, with uh, the relationships I've been able to have with guys like Christopher Hitchens, if you've had on the show, or Richard. Yeah, I want to talk about that when we come back a little yeah. bit. I want to talk about that when we come back. Because uh, we'll wrap up our, our hour with Larry. I, I want to talk about a couple of other things. You may have some more questions, too. These are things that need to be talked about. Uh, Larry and Fixed Point are, are taking these things on, defending the faith all over the world. But, you know, one of the things that needs to happen and and uh, fixed point is doing this. We got to train others. I, I mean, there's only one Larry, and we 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 got to train uh, our fellow followers of Christ to be able to go out and, as you said, fight the battle of of our faith, which is being persecuted all over the world and is starting to be persecuted, unprecedented in, in the American culture. Oh, that's this is uh, the the other part of our mission at Fixed Point. One of the reasons we go out into the culture and take on the bad guys, as it were, is to provide models and resources for Christians to do the same thing. So if you go to Fixed Point Foundation's website, you'll see a ton on gay marriage, on Islam, on uh, um, science, and so forth. But this is incredibly important um, for us, Rick, because there's so many mischaracterizations um, of the Christian faith and of our own text and that's because we generally don't know our text particularly well. So to so something we were talking about earlier, something that drives me nuts, hmm. is I'll be sitting in my, my office and we have the news on in the background much the same way that you do. And <clears throat> most recently, here's an example. Um, these people who are escaping ISIS in Africa and making their way to Europe, Christians were being thrown overboard. I'm sure you saw that. Sure you know, they were being thrown over overboard by Muslims, not really being reported too much here. Well, but so you have to really search to find that story. Not a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's not, not, being not a lot. But BBC was reporting it, and I'm reporting it very well, and there will be a roundtable discussion, and someone will say, wow, you know, I mean, these Christians are being killed by Muslims. And in, in fact, the data says that Christians are the most persecuted people on the planet, dying at a rate of seven per hour. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a it's a it's a crazy stat of how many Christians are dying um, around the world. Um, but anyway, eventually someone will say something about, yeah, but I mean, Christianity is a violent religion. And you're waiting for someone to object and to say, whoa, whoa, hold on just a second. Right. Just because someone says he's a Christian doesn't make what he does right. a Christian act. Um, and and, and this, this is why we have to really be preparing ourselves and understanding more about what our text says and, and more about what our faith is. Right. Well, in Rick and Bubba-ism, uh, it's impossible to do what Jesus would do if you don't know what he did. Yeah. Uh, so, so these summer classes are available, and, and so, so tell, tell me how this works. Um, well, uh, you can. This is actually uh, I, I want to mention here our sponsor, Summer Classics, uh, okay. who, is, who sponsors. <laughs> Fixed. You say Summer Classics. <laughs> summer Classic. <laughs> Bue White, the fine people at Summer Classics, uh, for all your summer cl- <laughs> summer furniture <laughs> furniture needs. You know, it's funny as I told Bue that when I went on Al Jazeera, sponsor, yeah. I was going to say that, yeah, they were and he said, you know, I'd really rather you not. Yeah, don't, you know, mention, meant, don't, don't mention me on Al Jazeera. Don't mention my support of your ministry. But they're good people who support what we do. But as far as summer classes go. Um, back in the day, you know, in order to go on to the next uh, next grade, it was necessary that I sure, attend a few. Sure, most yeah. definitely. Well, but but you are uh, providing training for our future apologetics with La Bastide and what you're doing in France. That's right. Um, yeah, we are good, preparing. Yeah. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, my wife and That I was are, a nice save right thank there. You, thank you. Yeah, you guys are coming to see us this summer. Yes, looking that's, forward to it. That's going to be a lot of fun, and we're trying to prepare the next generation. We do an awful lot, kind of under the radar with high school and college students and preparing them to defend their faith on these kinds of issues. I mean, when you get into a classroom mm-hmm. in college and these all, all these things are, are alleged about Jesus, right. about the Bible, uh, about Christianity, how are you going to answer that? Are you going to end up abandoning your faith? What about, uh, I was mentioning this, you set up in France to, to put together this, and, and I tried to hit some of the numbers, and I could tell people thought I was exaggerating. The church is all but dead uh, in Europe and especially in France. Yeah, in uh, continental Europe, it it really is. I mean, you're talking about. I mean, the Protestant population in France is about three percent. And now catch and, that number again, see, because wow. I said these numbers, people are like, "Come on." Yeah, and the in terms of how many are are actually Bible believing, I mean, for a lot of people, that's just kind of the affiliation, like St. Kiwanis Club, Bama fan, yeah. Auburn fan, whatever. We have that it, here. It too. doesn't. <laughs> yeah, we do. It doesn't really mean anything about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They had no Reformation. Um, Britain, it's. Uh, there's a bit of a pulse, but but not much of one. And these are things that that as Christians, I really think we have to be thinking about more carefully because the church is a sleeping giant in this country, but it must be awakened. It must awaken to the real issues and get off of you know raising the money for the for the new uh, you know uh, um, car park and start start preparing people for battle. For battle, because it's coming. I, I've been saying that over and over again, and, and it has to be done. Running out of time, Christopher Hitchens uh, has, has, has passed. Uh, you're, you had a great friendship with him. He was on the show three, four times yeah. uh, when he was still alive. He was you know, one of the what they call the four horsemen of the atheist movement. I call, That's them, right. I call them the evangelical atheists. That's right. Because they weren't satisfied with them believing this. They thought everybody should be, have this yep. non-belief. Which, by the way, made it a religion, and I hate yep. to get into that. But, <laughs> but anyway, but he, to me, had the type of personality you still wanted to hang with him. I always enjoyed talking. He reminded me of Richard Burton, yeah. you know, the great actor. He had that same attitude and swag. Yeah, about I said it. that in the Grace Effect. Um, yeah, yeah. He had a Richard Burton-like voice. Christopher was an interesting guy. Um, one of the things that I'm, uh, the points that I'm making about Christopher in this book is that Christopher, after 9/11, Christopher would have agreed with most of this conversation. For example, he defected from the left politically. And um, he did. Yeah, yeah. He was after nine eleven. He was supportive of the um, the war in uh, in I- Iraq. He was fairly supportive of the Bush administration. Went on Bill Maher, and Maher, who's as you know, is a rabid atheist. Yeah. He went after Maher and said, you know, uh, you, you know, I hear you tell dumb jokes to people in here all the time, and your silly audience laughs at all these things. Um, uh, he understood that Islam was. He predicted an ISIS, basically. So politically, he abandoned the left and went sort of to the right, which meant that people on the left, you know, hated him and vilified him. But I, I, I suggest to you that Christopher was contemplating a, a much broader defection, meaning I think Christopher yep. was contemplating a spiritual change. Well, and, and, and we know some of that firsthand. I know he agreed to study the Gospel of John with you. You all had some very deep conversations about it, and now you're going to kind of write a book, kind of the My Life with Christopher Hitchens kind of yep. deal. 
That should be really interesting. Whoa. Don't know what happened, but uh, because uh, – because you got to buy the book. Yeah. Well. <laughs> hey, Larry, thanks for being with us. Keep fighting good to the be good with fight, you guys. brother. Keep fighting the good fight. Uh, find out everything about Fixed Point. You can there at rickandbubba.com, the Fixed Point Foundation, defending the faith around the world. We'll be right back. More Rick and Bubba next. Rick and Bubba, Rick and Bubba.